In recent years, a lot of people have asked me just what the phrase analytic combinatorics actually means. In this lecture, I'm going to describe what the field is and tell the story of how it came into being. I think this context is important for anyone who's interested in learning anything about the field. Uh, this lecture is dedicated to the memory of my friend and colleague, Philippe Flagellet, who really was the driving force behind the development of the field and who died uh, suddenly uh, in 2011. I'll start off with a brief history uh, to try to uh, give some context for uh, how we got there. Uh, I first met Philippe in 1977. Uh, my, my first research paper that I wrote uh, after getting my PhD uh, was on an algorithm called odd-even merging. Uh, and uh, I, I went to, uh, in those days, uh, you would get your paper typed by a secretary uh, and go to a conference uh, and present it. Uh, and I was very proud to have developed uh, this formula that involves the gamma function uh, and the zeta function and gives a precise description uh, of the performance of this uh, particular algorithm. Uh, and uh, just a few months later, uh, uh, we had a conference uh, in uh, Providence, Rhode Island, where I was at the time. Uh, and uh, in, in those days, uh, you go to the conference and the first thing you do in the proceedings is uh, go and, uh, and look at the uh, table of contents of the proceedings, see what's there. And there was another uh, type paper. And I was amazed to see uh, a formula very much like mine uh, involving the zeta function and the gamma function, uh, even uh, though it was studying a completely different problem. Uh, and just as I was realizing that, uh, Philippe came up to me and said, I believe that we have a formula in common. Uh, and uh, both of us were very surprised to see the similarities uh, among the formulas. Uh, and it might be said that we spent the rest of our careers trying to understand why. Uh, now, uh, it's worth it to think about uh, w w what uh, the world was like at the time uh, that we started our research careers. Uh, we were both at that time in, the, in the, just the early part of our research careers. Uh, and the world uh, was changing in, in very important ways uh, all around us. And without going into too much detail, it really was the case that when we started school, uh, people wore coats and ties. We wore coats and ties to dinner and so forth. But by the time we got our PhDs, uh, there was Woodstock and hippies and, uh, and so forth. And with re respect to technology, there were huge changes. Uh, when we started school, computers were big, expensive, rare. Uh, there were physical devices for every switch or for every bit, uh, but not that much longer when we uh, s started uh, research and teaching, uh, we had integrated circuits and computers were becoming ubiquitous and fast and cheap. Uh, uh, another big thing was the access to computers. Uh, most of the time that we were uh, in college and in graduate school, uh, you would get uh, to develop a program. You had to put each line of the program on a punched card, and you had to give a box of punched cards to a computer operator, and you would get to run your program once a day. Uh, not that much longer, we had uh, later, uh, when we started research and teaching, we had timeshared terminals, uh, and we were always connected and have been connected ever since. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, when we started school, uh, my thesis was typed by a secretary. Uh, so you present the result, and six months later, you'd sort of see what it looked like uh, and submit it. It might be, uh, might be a year between the time that you get the result uh, and somebody sees it. Uh, but not that much longer, uh, we had word processing uh, and, uh, and mathematical typesetting, uh, and we could have uh, much uh, quicker and much broader communication uh, of, our, of our research results. And another important thing is that when we were in school and graduate school, uh, the curriculum was about math. Uh, everybody learned uh, lots of math. They you know, learned PDEs and abstract algebra and probability and topology. Uh, that's what, uh, that, that's what uh, people with an interest in working in technical fields did. Uh, but the, by the time we started research and teaching, there was computer science, and people had to learn about compilers and algorithms and data structures and graphics and operating systems, uh, programming languages, numerical analysis, uh, and all kinds of fields related to computer science. 
So these are huge differences in a relatively uh, short amount of time. And in thinking about it when preparing this talk, I really uh, came to understand and believe that this was a, a really a, a profound change in the way the world worked, uh, maybe even more profound than uh, the uh, <coughs> evolution of PCs, uh, personal computing, uh, or, or even the internet. Uh, the world was a vastly different place uh, when we started to get to work. Um, so uh, that's the context uh, which, where this uh, story starts. Uh, now, analysis of algorithms. So uh, that's the uh, field of study that uh, both Philippe and I were uh, engaged in. Uh, and it's actually uh, natural and ancient uh, questions. Uh, and it actually started with Babbage. Uh, uh, so this is a quote from, uh, from Babbage, who's uh, widely uh, attributed to have one of the, maybe the first designed the first computational engine. It was a mechanical device that could do uh, arithmetic computations. Uh, and what he said, even before building the thing, as soon as an analytic engine exists, it will necessarily guide the future course of the science because you'd be able to do computations. Uh, but he said, whenever any result is sought, the question will arise, by what course of calculation can these results be arrived at by the machine in the shortest time? That's in 1864. And you can see why it was important to Babbage. This thing actually had a crank, and the only way that it could compute things was by somebody turning the crank. Obviously, uh, you want to minimize the number of times uh, that you need to uh, turn the crank. And computers were uh, expensive uh, and slow and uh, uh, used energy and so forth. So um, minimizing the cost of computation uh, was always very important. Uh, even Turing, uh, who, uh, many, uh, who is, is uh, <coughs> the founder of theoretical computer science, uh, could see the importance of uh, these kinds of practical questions. Uh, we want to have a measure of the amount of work involved in a computing process, even though it might be a crude one. We count up the number of times that elementary operations are applied in the whole process uh, in, the, uh, in order to figure out how much work it's going to take before uh, to help in designing uh, efficient computation. But the field of analysis of algorithms was really initiated by uh, Knuth in the 1960s. Uh, and what uh, Knuth uh, told the world, uh, and there was some debate about it at the time, was that classical mathematics has really got the necessary tools that we need for understanding the performance of algorithms. Uh, there's things like recurrence relations and generating functions and asymptotic analysis that uh, has the benefit of giving a scientific foundation for the analysis of algorithms. And Knuth wrote uh, a series of four books uh, so far. Uh, in the first one came out in, uh, in the late 60s, and uh, two more came out in the early 70s uh, that really set out this uh, scientific foundation that we really can use classic mathematics to understand the performance uh, of algorithms. Uh, and with uh, those uh, mathematical models, uh, we could go ahead and accurately predict performance and compare the efficiency uh, of algorithms. Uh, and uh, that's what we found exciting. Uh, we could use classical mathematics uh, to uh, understand uh, the cost of a computation uh, and then test out those results and uh, uh, <coughs> formulate hypotheses about how long it would take to do something and then validate those hypotheses by actually implementing and running the programs and checking them uh, against the math. And there were many, many uh, practical applications where uh, people needed to uh, have these kinds of accurate math mathematical models and, and predictions. Uh, and Knuth's books uh, were very densely filled uh, with information uh, that helped us uh, advance uh, this science. Uh, so that's a brief history of uh, where we got started with analysis of algorithms.